Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're gonna play with the Mirror Machine 200. What in the world is the Mirror Machine 200? I know you're saying it's a vehicle I made in automation. 99% of the stats aren't important. What is important is that it has over 200 mirrors on it. Look at this glorious abomination. What I did is I added 200 mirrors to the vehicle and then I added a few more wherever there was empty space. So I don't know how many mirrors there actually are. I just know there's at least 200. And the best thing about this is when you crash, you get this glorious explosion of mirrors flying all over the place, which can cause some lag. The first crash is always really, really laggy. And then the ones later on aren't as bad. It's really weird. So here's the first crash. You're going to think the game freezes because it basically does. Like right here, the game looks frozen. If you give it time, it'll be okay, but it's going to skip ahead a little bit. You don't get to see this first collision, really. It's just kind of like, boom, the pieces start flying. Everything goes really fast, and then it goes back to slow-mo because the game's trying to catch up to where it's supposed to be. Now, though, the future crashes, you'll actually be able to see. But even, even this one looks glorious because you see all of the little mirrors just kind of bouncing around all over the place. It's beautiful. And look how many are still attached. So for this next test, it shouldn't lag as much on the initial impact, but there will still be some lag at a time you don't expect. Whenever the lights turn on, there is significant lag. And the lights automatically turn on after you have an impact because this is a modern vehicle. There is a fix for it, which I'll be going over first, but I want to show you this because it's kind of interesting that it causes the lag. So right now, everything's going okay. Small lag on that impact, but not nearly as bad as before. And then every time the lights come on, the FPS just tanked for a second. Like, it's nice and smooth, nice and smooth. Lag, 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 lag. And then smooth. And smooth. And smooth. And then lag. When I made the mirror machine, I did not expect that to be the issue. I figured the issue would be all the mirrors flying over the place, but that actually seems to work surprisingly well. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag because the game's not used to having 200 pieces all disconnected once, but it's not that bad. Also, you can see really badly even if a mirror falls off, the lights still light up on the vehicle when you do an automation exported car. So yeah, this lag is terrible. Good news is there is a very easy fix, and all it does is hurt the drivability a little bit. All you have to do is go to the parts selector, turn off car stability control, which gets rid of the automatic lights that come on after you crash. And technically, this is supposed to make the car drive worse. Honestly, this car drives so surprisingly well, it's not an issue. I mean, this is not an SUV at all. This is a space frame race car that has an SUV body on it. It's basically a Renault Espace F1. But anyways, here we go. Same crash as before. This time, the lights will not come on automatically, so there will be no lag, and you can really appreciate the beauty of 100 mirrors flying through the air. I think it's beautiful. It's kind of like confetti. Just all these pieces flying through the air. And if you know anything about confetti and video encoding, video encoding hates confetti. So I hope it doesn't really just tank the video quality every time the mirrors start flying all over the place. It's not quite as bad as confetti, but man, there are literally hundreds of mirrors flying through the air. Okay, at most there are hundreds, but there are at least a hundred if you really want to be technical and picky about it. But overall, that was pretty good. We still got some mirrors attached, though. I want to try to get as many off of this thing as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to dump it off of the edge of a cliff and see what that looks like. And I want it to go off the cliff nice and slowly like this. So it really rolls and it gives every mirror the chance to hit something so it falls off. Because the thing that makes the mirrors fall off is just them coming into contact with the ground. That's all that really matters. You see, we just have a trail of mirrors just following us along as we go down this hill. There goes a bunch more flying off as we hit our roof. And we've just made a complete mess of mirrors all over the place. Like, this is just pollution of the beautiful Utah canyons. Let's see, if we go up here, are there still mirrors just kind of polluting up here as well? Like, yep, there's just a mess of mirrors up here too. I have made a disaster. Anywhere there's a nice flat area, you're going to find some mirrors. Like, right here, it's not really flat, not really flat too much. Here's maybe a flat area. Look, there's a couple more mirrors. This thing just ruins beautiful scenic areas. That's its specialty. All right, so let's get this thing to the road. And just trying to get to the road, we pollute another 50 or so mirrors in this great landscape. But we're gonna try to do some vehicle on vehicle impacts. And we're gonna use mirror machines versus mirror machines. So that's gonna be over 400 mirrors in total. I mean, we could basically round that up to saying there's gonna be close to 500 mirrors in total. 
that's not how many are actually going to be flying through the air, unfortunately, because you can't get all of them to fly off at once. But we should have close to about, I would say, 300 in the air. I could totally see about half of each coming off of the vehicles. Maybe a little bit more than that. So, yeah, that's a lot of mirrors we're going to have some fun with. And the first impact we're going to do is going to be the same one you saw, but without the lag. There is a small dip in FPS on that initial impact, but for my computer, it's basically unnoticeable in video. And after that one, we probably have about 200 mirrors flying all over the place because there's not that many left on the vehicle. That was a really nice collision that really got them flying all over the place. And they're just leaving a mess. Again, that's vehicle specialty is leaving a mess of mirrors all over the place. That's what's left of the vehicle, so let's go ahead and bring it back up to the road. And now it's time for the vehicle on vehicle impacts. For that, I'm just going to tell the AI to go ahead and chase after me, and we'll have a direct impact. We should be both going about 130, 150 miles per hour in that range, I would say. I mean, they... and if you haven't guessed it by now, this thing has over a thousand horsepower, man. It's fast. It's stupid fast. It's great. So here we go. Going to be using 16 times slow-mo. Let's see what happens. 150 miles per hour from my, I think theirs was a little bit slower because the AI is always a little bit slower, but that is beautiful. Man, that is awesome to look at. There is debris everywhere, just exploding everywhere. And the interesting thing to think about is if you just had two mirrors, they could fly as far away as that one that's way in the air. So you could have a crash like this and you'd never be able to find the mirror again because it's just blending in with all the trees and stuff. It's gone, basically. And then it's just raining mirrors after the impact. That was a beautiful collision. And I got one more idea I want to try. I want to see what happens if we take the mirror machine, slam it into another mirror machine, but sliding into it just like we did when we crashed into the wall a second ago. The 300, maybe even 400 mirrors flying all over the place all at once. That looks like pretty good alignment. We are going to slam right into them at a good rate of speed. And there go the mirrors. Not quite as many as I was expecting. Kind of, they all kind of got smashed into the wall, I think. Yeah, all the explosion is over on the left side. Nothing really on the right side. So that makes it look a little less dramatic initially. But now that you see the pieces spreading out, the debris field is here. And for that one, I would say probably about 250 mirrors fell off. Maybe 300. Not quite as much as I was hoping, unfortunately. But still, the most mirrors so far. And now I have a dumb idea. What happens if you drive a car over a pile of 200 and something mirrors? So we go to the fun stuff and we just break all of the mirrors off. Which also breaks the tires off, but that'll be fine. We gotta move the body off of it manually. We'll use this guy to drive over the mirrors and we're gonna try two attempts. One is gonna be nice and slow. And then if that works out fine, we'll go a little bit faster. And this thing is so fast, it can go up to highway speeds. I don't want that, just like 30 miles per hour. And nothing really happened there. So now we'll actually get some distance between us, enough to hopefully go around 100 miles per hour. And we're going to plow through whatever's left in the mirrors. I think there should still be a nice pile there. And we'll see if that affects the vehicle at all. So there is 100 miles per hour. Going to plow through the mirrors and the tires a little bit. Small bump, but it really didn't do too much to my vehicle. A pile of mirrors is not going to threaten me. What will, though, is a wall like that. And again, mirrors flying all over the place. And the whole drive shaft just shot out of the vehicle somehow. I don't know what I did there. I think out of all these crashes, my favorite was the head-on one. So let's do one more of those at a higher rate of speed. Once again, we'll be using the AI for this, which we got to refresh their car because they're just in a ditch. And I'll tell the AI to go ahead and chase me. And I'm just going to go with my car, bring it all the way to the end of the Utah Highway. And it will take a second to drive this distance. But the combined speeds of the vehicle should be well over 300 miles per hour. Probably close to 400 miles per hour. It'll be a great impact, I think. So there goes my vehicle right here. Reset it nice and fresh. Get the AIs just fresh just in case. AI is already after me, so I gotta waste no time getting myself going after them. We are already up to 100 miles per hour. Man, this thing really is stupid fast. I'll go over the whole build of this vehicle at the end of the video in automation. But I wanted to have all the crashing come first because I know that's what most of you guys are most interested in. All right, there is their car. I'm going about 175 miles per hour, 180 miles per hour. Assuming they're going the same, that's a combined speed of 360 miles per hour. Which means we have a lot of mirrors going a lot of places. That is just so 
cool to look at seeing everything just flying through the air. I love my mere confetti. It's raining mirrors, man. It's beautiful. I can watch crashes like this all day. I love it. But there is one more thing we gotta test. If we drop the vehicle down, leap of death, does every mirror fly off of it? Let's find out. And one thing that's nice is after you load up the vehicle once, next time you load it up, it's not gonna be as slow. But you still gotta make sure to go and turn off the car stability control, otherwise you will get lag. And with this vehicle, we really have two distinct ways to get down Leap of Death. First way is just to gas it the whole way down this hill and hit the ramp at almost 100 miles per hour. When you do that, you're not gonna have that many impacts, but the impacts you have, they're gonna be big. This thing's probably gonna hit the ground twice, maybe three times, I would guess, and then it's at the end. First impact is coming up. We're gonna do a lot of slow-mo on this so you can really see, hopefully, all the mirrors flying off. It's gonna happen soon. Waiting for impact. Oh, look at that, it's just kinda like, Hovering above it, the suspension does its job, and then it just cruises along. That's actually a lot less mirrors falling off than I expected for how fast we're going. I mean, with gravity pulling us down and all that, probably like 300 miles per hour. That's stupid fast, and it still has half the mirrors, I would say. But you look around, still got a beautiful explosion of mirrors. Uh, but being honest with it, the problem with Leap of Death is you're hitting the thing so fast the mirrors fly away too far, too fast, it seems like. Like, you can see a beautiful explosion just for a second, and they're just, they're so far away, so fast. It's just like, oh, there go the mirrors. So, uh, honestly, I think I like the head-on collision the best. That was a beautiful crash. But I had to test Leap of Death and see what happens. We still got some mirrors on this thing, though. Let's see if they fall off on the final impact. Is it going to hit the ground, or is it going to hit the water? Both! It's just going to hit the ground, then the water. And uh, a couple of mirrors still attached. There's the engine. And the engine's funny, it looks so small, but that's an 8.2 liter engine, it's a monster. Alright, here we go. This time, we're just gonna let it roll off the cliff, see if that looks a little bit different or not. Kinda like this one better, you see the mirror's actually flying all over the place some, that's nice. And I'm just gonna let this one run at full speed since we used slow-mo on the last one. And if you guys like seeing the mirrors fly over the place as much as I do, do leave a comment so I know, and we'll do a sequel to this, where we make the mirror machine 400. Which will have 400 mirrors, or at least... We're gonna increase the mirrors until Beam and G has problems. And I think all the mirrors might be gone. Let's do a quick check. And, uh, yeah, there are no mirrors left. But it's fun, if you look around, you can see like, hey, there's a mirror over there, and you see that spec, go up to it. Yep, that's another mirror. There's another spec uh, way over there. What is that? Yeah, there's another mirror. Fun to do, find all the mirrors, right? Uh, now though, we're gonna move over to automation so I can show you the build for this vehicle real quickly, just in case any of you were curious. I know what you're thinking, where are the mirrors at? Well, when I loaded up the vehicle, I accidentally hit to change the body style, and when you do that, all of the little details you've added just vanish into thin air, I guess. So that kind of sucks. I'm sure there's some way to recover it, I'll look into that later on, but that's not important, because you saw what it looks like with the mirrors on in Beam and G Drive. We're just here to show you what the build was like, and the build makes no sense at all. The panel material is carbon fiber, the chassis type is space frame, material, light AHS steel, front longitudinal engine, double wishbone suspension in the front and push rod in the back. So basically, this is like a supercar. That's what that tells you. It's like a supercar configuration there. For the engine, it is a big, big block V8. This is an 8.2 liter V8, roughly based on a Chevy big block, which has very similar dimensions to it, but that's where it ends. Everything else is about is different. Like this is a magnesium block with fancy heads. I know the Chevy one don't do that. The head and valves, the dual overhead cam, four valve configuration so you can get the variable valve lift. The crank is all just like the best materials you can get. And for once, I just slapped all of the quality sliders to 15. I basically never do that, but I just wanted a fast engine. I didn't care about the realism here, so I did that for everything. Compression, I increased that some. Cam profile, I did something a little bit different. I dropped that as low as it can go, so I could get a lot of low-end power. And this thing has a lot of low-end power. It has 600 foot-pounds of torque at 600 RPM. That's stupid, man. Like, that's stupid torque. I love it. Variable valve lift is on, all that kind of variable valve timing just to get it to be a little bit more efficient, more power out of it. No turbos. This is just a big, naturally aspirated engine that makes over a thousand horsepower. It's great. Fuel system, best you can possibly get all around. Increase the fuel mixture some, increase the timing. Put the RPM limit as high as it could go before I increase the quality. So if I wanted to, I could increase the RPM limit quite a bit, but too late for that. It's sitting at 7300 and we'll keep it at that. All the stuff here for the exhaust just tuned to be as 
fast as you can possibly go. The exhaust diameter was specifically made for that. Everything else is basically, there is no exhaust. And then going on to here, there's nothing really to talk about as well. Just kind of like it has a, well, it had a four wheel drive setup. Some of the things got messed up when I changed the body style. Top speed was 200 miles per hour. Distribution was like 65%. Tires, nice big fat tires it had on it, as big as you can get, made out of carbon fiber. Fat rims on it because it looks better that way. Big brake kit because you gotta stop this big beast, which doesn't actually weigh that much, but still big brakes. And then you have the downforce so you can get a little bit better grip, with more speed. Only one seat inside. I told you this thing is not really what it looks like. It's basically a race car underneath. So it has just one seat. And then it has the electronic variable steering, electronic stability control, no safety because it adds weight. And then it has the active sport suspension tuned for racing. I just clicked the racing preset and all those stats together get you a car that goes from zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds, quarter mile in under 10 seconds, top speed of 200 miles per hour. And it looks like that underside though. It looks like that. It's a space frame chassis with one chair in it. Basically like this is just a race car with a, a van frame on it. Like I said, it's basically like a Renault Espas F1. That's what I made here. And that's just going over the stats real quickly. You can pause that and look at any specific page if you want to see what it looked like. Uh, that was just for anybody who was curious. The main appeal was just watching the mirrors fly over the place. So that's going to do it for this video. Till next time, it's YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I'll know. I can tell by counting the number of mirrors that fly off the vehicle. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.